British intelligence had finally caught up to Harold Cole. They burst into the traitor's apartment and arrest him. But what do they know? The agents throw Cole into the bathroom and lock the door until they can decide his fate. He's too dangerous to keep alive. He will be executed for treason. When they open the bathroom door, it's empty. The window is open and Cole is on the run once again. What did Harold Cole do? Why was MI6, MI5 and officers in the British Army after him? Harold Cole was tied up in petty crime his whole life. When World War II broke out, he enlisted in the British Army and was shipped off to fight in France. Cole had developed some unique skills as a young criminal like telling convincing lies and sneaking around undetected. He used these skills to rescue allies from behind enemy lines and get them back to safety. In fact, Harold Cole became somewhat of a hero. He saved hundreds of lives by operating behind enemy lines in France. He would bring POWs back to Allied-controlled territories and then go back out and do it all over again. He became part of the British Expeditionary Force and not only brought people home but led high-risk missions into Nazi territory. He built a network of allies and safe houses across France. Cole had a lot of connections and due to his fast thinking and ability to charm, almost everyone he encountered liked him. However, as the war progressed, he would end up betraying them all. Soon after Cole first arrived in France, he was caught stealing from one of his sergeants and locked up. As German forces advanced and the British had to retreat, Cole was left behind. In the chaos that ensued, he managed to escape captivity. Harold Cole took an alias and returned to Allied-controlled territory where he started fresh. It was at this point that Harold Cole convinced British commanders that he was a British intelligence captain. It was during this time in his career that he helped POWs and Allied soldiers get out of Nazi-controlled territories. However, Cole was always looking out for number one. And even as he seemed to be helping people, he was also stealing funds that were supposed to be used for rescue missions. Cole was a charismatic guy, and he convinced a lot of people that he was only there to help, but that was only a partial truth. Although he aided people in getting out of Nazi-controlled France, he used most of the money given to him by the British government to live a life of luxury. Thinking of how messed up that is, Harold Cole was taking money meant to save people's lives and keeping it for himself. Cole would use the money to buy expensive champagne, cars, and prostitutes. He set up his base of operations in Marseille, France. It was here that British intelligence got wind of what Cole was doing. They couldn't believe that someone would take the money which had been reserved for rescuing people from the atrocities of the Nazis. It was not only disgraceful but disgusting. British intelligence officers decided it was time to put a stop to Harold Cole's shady dealings. He may have been considered a war hero by some, but if he was capable of stealing money that could be used to save people's lives, then he was more than capable of selling out the Allies to the Nazis. And as British intelligence dug deeper, they found that Cole wasn't just skimming some money off the top, he was stealing thousands and thousands of francs. British officers were sent to Cole's flat in Marseille to confront him. They had a pile of evidence to charge him with. When the officers approached him, Harold Cole immediately broke down and begged for forgiveness. Just one look around his lavishly decorated apartment was enough to condemn him. The officers threw him in the bathroom where Cole escaped out the window. Now that British intelligence was on to him, he needed to get out of Marseille and lay low. In the cover of the night, Cole made his way through the city, making sure to steer clear of any officers or military personnel who might be looking for him. One anecdotal account reported that Cole was seen speeding out of Marseille in a recently acquired car. Apparently, the engine roared as he pushed the accelerator to the floor and raced out of the city. From Marseille, Cole made his way to Lille, France. He must have driven through the countryside, weaving on and off the roads to avoid being spotted by Allied or Nazi troops. Eventually, Cole made it to Lila, where he either turned himself over to the Nazis or was caught by them. Either way, what Harold Cole did next would make him one of the most wanted deserters of World War II. Cole began working for the Nazis and giving them intelligence on the secret recovery missions being carried out by the British. He led them to escape routes used to smuggle out POWs to the Allied territories. He even provided the Nazis with names, maps, and addresses of people who were involved in the rescue missions. These were people whom Cole confided in while smuggling POWs out of Nazi-controlled areas. In order for this network to work, he had to gain the trust of a lot of people, and since he was saving lives and delivering people out of the clutches of the Nazis, the informants and members of the escape network trusted Harold Cole. Unfortunately, that trust was misplaced, as Cole betrayed them all in an instant. It's reported that Harold Cole gave up 30 typed pages worth of information to the Nazis, and the crazy thing was he was doing it all to save his own skin. He showed no remorse at all for the lives he was destroying. There was no weight on his conscience for the murders he was involved in. Cole was a coward and would give up every ally he ever worked with if it meant saving his own life. The speed at which the Nazis utilized Cole's information was staggering. 
Only weeks after Cole defected, people who were part of the escape network in France began to be arrested by Nazi soldiers. It was even reported that Cole would be with the Nazis whenever they took someone away. The Allied sympathizers were interrogated for information. This included literal torture, such as waterboarding and electric shocks. And it wasn't just the members of the escape network that Cole gave up. He also helped the Nazis capture British soldiers and undercover agents. He would lead the Nazis to airdrop locations where they would capture Allied soldiers and agents. And it would seem there was nothing Cole wouldn't stoop to. While in France, Harold Cole used the money he was stealing to not only buy nice things for himself, but for his lady friends as well. He would impress women with his expensive tastes and lifestyle. He also had a charismatic personality as he was able to fool the British intelligence for so long and also other people in his life. Unfortunately, he even tricked a French woman named Suzanne into marrying him and birthing his child. The most messed up part about this relationship was that when he was on the run from the Allies and joined the Nazis, Cole used his wife in his double-crossing plans. He tricked Suzanne into giving him information about the members of resistant groups that she delivered messages to. Cole told her he was actually a double agent working for the British, but in reality, Cole was working for the Nazis. He kept up the ruse with Suzanne, getting several operatives captured and killed until she figured out he was betraying her and the Allies. She fled to Allied-controlled France and cut all ties with her lying, cheating husband. As the war continued on and Allied forces closed in on Germany, it became clear to Cole that if he was caught, his fellow Brits would show him no mercy. Everyone knew which side of the war Harold Cole was on. In 1944, Cole and the Nazi forces were pushed further and further back. Millions of people died on both sides. Unfortunately, Cole was not one of them. It's estimated by the end of the war, Harold Cole was directly responsible for the deaths of at least 50 men and women, while betraying somewhere around 150 total. He may not have pulled the trigger himself, but he handed each one of those people over to the Nazis, knowing full well what would happen to them. Perhaps the most upsetting thing was that even after the war ended, Harold Cole was still not brought to justice. In 1945, Cole took the alias of an undercover operative for British intelligence named Captain Mason. He was living in southern Germany and aided American forces as they made their way through the country. Unsurprisingly, he was using his new position to once again live a comfortable lifestyle. He apparently was now in possession of six cars, 200 gallons of gasoline, 500 bottles of wine, and enough ammunition to fight his own small war. Cole even held parties for the leaders of the Allied forces. He lived in a large house that had been confiscated from its owner, presumably because he had been a Nazi sympathizer, but you never can be quite sure with Harold Cole. Keeping in character, Cole began working with Allied forces to find and arrest Nazi soldiers, some who we can presume were the very same people he was feeding intel to about the Allies earlier in the war. He would gather info on where Nazi officers were hiding and help flush them out. It is documented that Cole killed at least one person during this time, so it would seem he had no qualms with murdering people from either side of the war, as he flip-flopped back and forth between the Nazis and the Allies. He would work for the devil himself if it meant saving his own skin. Eventually, his luck ran out when he sent a postcard to one of his ex-mistresses in Paris. British intelligence got hold of the letter and handed it over to investigators responsible for bringing deserters to justice. A major from the division was sent to Germany to collect Harold Cole, who was unaware that he'd been made. The task force responsible for arresting Cole found him in his British uniform carrying a Thompson machine gun and two pistols. They confiscated his weapons and placed him under arrest. And even though this would be the third time that the British had arrested Harold Cole during World War II, he would escape yet again. At the prison he was being held in, Cole managed to get his hands on an American uniform. He put it on and was able to convince the guards that he was a United States sergeant. Cole walked right out the front door of the prison. To add insult to injury, he grabbed a typewriter on his way out, saying he was using it to write his memoirs. The British were on the hunt again. Harold Cole had made them look like a fool too many times. Then in 1946, almost a year after he had escaped from prison, British intelligence received word that a man matching Cole's description had been seen in a Paris nightclub. The French police were sent to arrest the deserter. They tracked him back to the apartment he was staying in. The police quietly made their way up the stairs to Cole's flat. The old wooden steps creaked under their weight. As the officers reached Cole's floor, they were surprised to find him waiting in an open doorway, pistol raised. He had heard them coming. Cole began to fire at the officers, who returned a volley of bullets. There was nowhere for Cole to run, so he emptied his gun, but not before being shot multiple times by the French police. Blood ran down the front of his shirt as he slid to the floor. When the police entered the room, Harold Cole was dead. British intelligence received word that the deserter had been killed. Much to their relief, they would never have to deal with Harold Cole again. MI6 labeled Cole as the worst British traitor of the war, who finally got what he deserved.
Now watch what happens when you go AWOL. Or check out Soldier Sentenced to Death Escapes, Becomes Jungle King. Insane true story.